Welcome back to Why Blank Lost. I'm David Bloomberg, and I just want to say, if you go down to Willow Farm to look for butterflies, flutterbys, gutterflies, open your eyes. It's full of surprise. And of course, joining me once again is my co-host, Jessica Lewis. Uh, hang on just a second. Everyone lies, like the fox on the rocks and the musical box. Oh, there's mom and dad, and good and bad, and everyone's happy to be here. There's Winston Churchill dressed in drag. He used to be a British flag, plastic bag. What a drag. The frog was a prince. The prince was a brick. The brick was an egg. The egg was a bird. Okay. Now that we've got that settled, it means we both have a vote today in discussing what happened to my winner pick, David Voce. And do I get an idol too? Does my idol tick yes, on? Yes, we both have an idol. I cannot uh, vote you off. I love it. You'll this. notice that, you know, I said last time, one of the two people who was there was not going to be here anymore. And yeah. well, Rick's not here anymore. Rick's not you here. Are. Sorry, Rick. It's us. It's us. And yes, so here I am. Thank you so much, uh, David, for another incredible moment for the two of us to talk about someone who has talked about us on a podcast as well. Yes. I mean, Rob said at the end of his interview with Voce that his loss is the fault of this podcast and me mm -hmm. specifically, which is why <laughs> I'm wearing this shirt. That's right. Poche, that's why you lost. <laughs> it's Bloomberg's fault. That's it. We can finish the podcast. That's right. <laughs> now, <laughs> Rob also said people should listen to see how we spin it. But we don't spin here. No. We compare Voce's game to rules I originally wrote way back after season one have been modifying ever since, and which he studied before heading out to play. Mm -hmm. We look at all the non-spoiler information available from what we saw on TV, interviews, CBS All Access clips, if they ever use CBS All, I'm sorry, Paramount Plus, my, my uh, <laughs> statement for out of date, and of course, social media. Uh, the new updated version of the rules is available at robhasawebsite.com slash blog slash survivor rules, or you can be like David Voce. That's right. And get the shorter and much more colorful version of the rules in poster mm -hmm. form right at tinyurl.com slash David Rules Poster 2. That's right. Yes. And David Voce, even though, as I did indicate on Twitter, likely has all of these rules memorized. It's always good to be able to hang them on your wall just in case. Or you can do something else with them. Right, David? You can. You can wear them on your body. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, just like this shirt. Uh, and in order to get them in that form, you go to the, robhasawebsite.com or robhasapodcast.com. Click the merch link near the top. That'll take you to the RHAP shop where you can scroll through. You can find that design. You can find this design that mm -hmm. I have on a mug as well. Um, you can get a sweatshirt. You, you can get whatever you want. Well, you Pretty should much. definitely, definitely order everything all up, especially yes. since it's October. I think mail takes a long time. Holidays are coming. Maybe you should start ordering things now. Just an idea. Uh, I thought you were going to say they should dress up like us for Halloween. <gasps> That's a great idea, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> well, I will say I would like to add here as far as the rules are concerned, because you did talk about how David studied up on those rules before he went out to play the game. And I think that's something that everyone is at this point very aware of because it's been talked yeah. about by us has been talked about by David. It's been talked or Voce. I got to keep you guys straight here mm -hmm. because too many Davids, but I did have an opportunity to be chatting with Voce about his blame on us. <laughs> mostly you though. Mostly you. I'm just, I'm guilty by association. Okay. That's, that's what it is. Guilt by association. I, I thought he blamed his eye infections on you. Uh, that was really funny. I, you know, it's it's great that I will I will never be remembered for like my survivor gameplay. I will be remembered for my eye infection and that damn rock. But regardless, that's okay. At least I'm memorable, right? So, but here's what Voce informed me of in regards to the rules. And I did really love this. So I have to share this with you. And I told him that I was going to share and he said it was fine. So he advised me that they weren't allowed to take anything survivor related to quarantine or pregame. So he printed the 30 page rules on the back pages of a scientific journal between the results and discussion section and made it right past the search and screen crew. That was his daily reading up until the marooning. That is 
amazing. Right. I, I knew, love I like... that story for so many reasons. I mean, for one, anyone who's ever worked in the scientific field or, you know, at which I have knows that, yeah, you can have a pile of papers there. Because at one point, um, when I was in grad school, there was another grad student whose thesis was overdue and her professor was demanding it from her. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't ready yet. So she knew, even though he was demanding it, he wasn't actually going to read it. So mm. she printed all what she had and then added like 50 more blank pages <gasps> and clipped it together and gave it to him. And so he saw the top few pages and then saw how thick it was. And he threw it on his desk and he was like, OK, good. That's that's done. And then oh when she was actually word. done, she snuck into his office and subbed in the rest of the page. <laughs> That's genius. Well, <laughs> Voce did the same thing with your rules. So uh, kudos to him for being very creative with how he managed to sneak that past all of the screening because they do actually search you. I will say that they, they, they go through your bags. They look at all of your things. And sometimes you have things in your bag you don't want people to see. But if you're good at hiding things, kind of like Voce. They won't find it. I feel like we need a whole off-season podcast on things that were in your bag that you didn't mm. want people to see. Mm -hmm. but, um... <laughs> I just remember sitting there going, oh, God, they're going through my luggage right now. <laughs> I hope they don't go in that side compartment. <laughs> but anyway, so they didn't. <laughs> Didn't catch they must, it. They, they must have really tightened it up because when Rob Sesternino took mm -hmm. my rules, he just took them. I mean, right. he printed yeah. them out and just took them. Of course, they were a lot shorter then. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, like they yeah, didn't, the thirty they didn't have yeah they didn't have all the parts about Rob Sesternino in them for example that's true that yeah. is true but yes yeah, so so I now we need to explain to everybody why your rules did not cause the demise of Voce so that's this right. is what right we well need that's to get yes, everyone to understand yes. yeah. I mean this was clearly the worst episode ever of Survivor forty one. <laughs> and we know there were only two episodes. Um, and certainly for the season, it was the worst showing for the Y Blank Loss Predictions team. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> Although my, my predictions were actually right because everything I predicted actually happened. I even said that I was concerned for Voce. And so do you see when the butterflies actually are part Butterfly? of the show... Yes. then my butterfly effect doesn't have the same effect. It actually works. So it's like this weird opposite thing. Mm -hmm. mm. It's mm -hmm. Trust me on the logic there. Okay. All right. Now, on the plus side, it would be difficult for us to get any worse in the future. Oh, gosh. I know. I listen, So I, you could look at it that way. I mean, in, we're only know, going, going up forward, from here. Yeah, it's got to be up. Mm -hmm. And another plus, my pick lasted longer than yours. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Your number one fan got voted out third. Yeah. Excellent job. Yeah. So good. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, now, another thing, by the way, I know that I have heard. I know that I have heard. So I guess I don't know. I've just heard. Hmm. There are mm -hmm. some spoilers out there about you know, things that uh, people on Instagram and stuff like that, which anyone who follows me on Instagram clearly knows I'm barely there. But we have made it clear beyond all doubt that we are completely unspoiled. We really are. Like, there's no question now. Like, yeah, we have no inside information. We are just picking names out of a hat at this point. Like there's, yes, definitely. Yeah, we, we suck. Yeah. <laughs> Only at predictions, not at postdictions. That's that's true. Yes. We're terrible at predictions. Yes. Based on the minimal information we get. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um so but uh so you know, normally now we transition into the rules, but well, actually normally we talk about some other things first. So we're gonna go with the second normal. Because we do have a few things to talk about from this episode, maybe more than a few. First, as bad as we are at predictions i want to pat ourselves on the back from last week when we discussed why abraham lost because obviously there were things we didn't know but have now learned from voce mm -hmm. like how abraham broke the flint on day one and then just walked away or mm -hmm. how he was strong but wore out quickly which kind of eliminates that strength you know a lot mm -hmm. of people responded 
uh, both before the podcast and after saying, ah, oh, you know, they're going to pay for that, getting rid of that strong guy. And even, you know, after this episode aired, they were like, see, it all goes back to Abraham. No, I mean, Rick Devins picked up on that by pointing out Abraham was clearly the weakest of the quote unquote strong guys. Mm -hmm. It right. doesn't do any any good to be that strong if you're going to, as he said, as, as Voce said, gas yourself out. Right. Yeah. If you can't last, it's not going to help anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, and we also noted that his extreme focus on Tiffany excluded him from talking any real strategy, uh, which is what Voce has also now mentioned. Um, and Voce even said some of the same things we did, which was that a even though Abraham was calling out Tiffany, she didn't actually do anything wrong in those first challenges. Right. Right. So I just, uh, you know, as, as bad we as did we did well there. Yeah, we did well there. And that's what we're good at. You know, the, yeah. the backwards looking. Um, right. So uh, I also want to spend a little time talking about Xander's beware advantage slash disadvantage because there are so many questions it's terrible yes well right now we're only going to talk about it factually rather than how it was interpreted by the players that'll be in rule seven okay um but thankfully there have been a couple of statements made to explain what can and can't be done uh voce himself told dalton ross that xander had the extra vote but you can't use the extra vote if you don't have a primary vote mm-hmm and there's the shot in the dark, but you can't use a shot in the dark if you don't have your primary vote. Mm -hmm. And producer Joe Leah confirmed on Twitter that Xander can't use his shot in the dark because he has no vote to give. Mm -hmm. So it's like this daisy chain of rules, you know, if X, there's then too Y. many. Right. Well, that's exactly it because mm -hmm. it was never explained to viewers. No, and, I, and the players didn't even understand it. So right. if the players don't even understand it, how are you supposed to integrate it into your game? Right. Well, that we'll get to rule seven. I know. Um, I, I know. Listen, I don't uh, want to wait. I, I know. Um, but, you know, we know Jeff Probst changed up some things because Mike White asked him, but is it fun? They Someone forgot to say, but is it understandable to viewers? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because sure. when people who devote significant parts of their lives to covering this show mm -hmm. can't even figure it out until it's explained outside the game. That's a problem for a TV show. Yeah. And I just, it's one of those situations where like, I think uh, like watching it back, like I went and I watched the, the show again, like a second Me time. Too. And I actually took a picture of the, the, the paper, the parchment that that mm -hmm. was on just to kind of like look at it, realized it was not astronauts. It was astroturf. I missed that too. But I think. Goats would also be confused by astronauts. No, no, it would, but he said astroturf. I thought he said astronauts. I know. I, I'm but, just saying it's true also either way. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm knocking things over. But so I think what is so disheartening about utilizing that type of an advantage or whatever you want to call it for a television show is that not very many people are going to watch it again right mm -hmm. people watch it week to week i never used to re-watch the episodes before i did a podcast i would watch the episode and maybe I, be confused about something and that was it until this season i almost never re-watched an episode see there you go so I, I feel like you are causing your viewers to not necessarily enjoy the program as much because they're not they can't be invested if they don't understand what the hell is happening. Right. And if they're not, if they don't, if they're not invested, they're not going to go back and watch it to further understand it. Cause they're like, well, that was dumb. And I don't like what that was. I don't even understand it. So whatever. So you're going to end up ruining it for people instead of people looking forward to it and saying, Oh, this is going to be so exciting. How is this going to play out? It's not, that's not the effect it's having. It's having right. the opposite effect. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's provoking some discussion, but most of the discussion is I'm confused as hell what's going on here. Not right. wow. That's great. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, another thing, there still remains a lot of speculation about what happens if Xander's voted out before all three idols are found. Right. If all three silly statements have to be said at the same challenge and he's gone. Then what? Exactly. Anyone else who finds the disadvantage is screwed. And he's or... got to say that damn phrase at every challenge moving forward. Well, I don't think so. I think that at least he can wait until someone else finds one and utters theirs. He doesn't. So have he to doesn't say it, have but... to say it every time. He right. I mean, he might, but uh, I don't think he has to. Mm. Um, because anyone who finds the next one 
should remember, oh, he said that crazy thing about butterflies. Right. Now I have to go and say this. Mm. Um, but you know, if if he gets voted out, like if he had been voted out this time, mm-hmm. does it get rehidden? Um, and even so, does it result in the people who find it still getting screwed? Because if it gets rehidden at his camp, everyone on his tribe knows not to open it. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think they should make it a legacy disadvantage where Xander mm. passes it down to someone of his choice. Oh, I like that. And well, and then here's the other point, too. That's a great point. But then also he has a choice to not open it. Right. And this is something that I, I put yeah. out on Twitter because I was I was like, well, does that mean he can just hide it really terribly or could he just like leave it on the trail? Like, what does he have to do? I thought when it said he you has... have to put it back. But is that, is that I don't know. Is that what it says? I don't I remember. thought so. I I'll have to I'll have to go back and look at my picture. Yeah. <laughs> well, though, that yeah. was on the outside. That wasn't on the inside. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So but it's like, could he if he puts it back, does he have to hide it? Can he just like, you know what I mean? Like you could if you know that it's potentially something terrible, you want someone to find it. So I wouldn't do a bang up job hiding it. I'd like just kind of stick it there and be like, all right, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. Or he could have left it there, gone back to his allies ally or allies and said hey i found this thing it said beware what should we do right mm-hmm. that's true yeah so interesting so all right now moving away from the twists at least until rule seven uh another thing i'd like to bring up is something you already mentioned which is so many davids um so many david you know voce's answer to the question the interview question of why did you go by Voce instead of your first name? Well, that's the answer. And so growing up, he always went by his last name. Now I, I feel you, uh, you know, as a fellow David, I certainly understand that at work. At one point there were three of us in the same section and we each picked a name. So I stuck with David, which I always stick with David. You will not hear people calling me Dave, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Another went by Dave. And then another went by his family nickname. And so that worked fine until one day the boss of all three of us sent an email and said, like, Dave, you need to do this. (laughs) And we were like. That wasn't you then. No. Well, right. But it was very confusing as to why she was telling Dave to do that. And we were all like, why would he be the one doing that? (laughs) She meant me, but she didn't Uh, know our system. Right. Yeah. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, uh, I don't even want to hear it because I'm named Jessica, right? Now, we all know that Jessica is a name that a lot of people don't like to use when they're actually playing Survivor. They like to change their names. So Jessica is not a common name that you hear in Survivor, but it happens to be a very common name that people use because, I don't know, when I was, what the hell? Now you're doing clothes. Like, what is this? We're changing clothes? What? What's happening? What? I just, I just, you know, since there was all this talk about the Davids. Oh, the Davids. Look I at just, you. I uh, just wanted to uh, be you dressed You did like a quick change. Yeah. It's impressive. Just wanted to be dressed appropriately and <laughs> shout out to the Davids. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. and uh, this is, of course, an uh, Eric Reichenbach shirt. He didn't just make the, you know, the poster for us. He he also makes his own shirts. So yeah, if your name is David, you should definitely get this shirt. Yes, and he's coming up with some really uh, great artwork for season yes. 41 as well. So you should definitely check that out. Yes. too. So I will stop kvetching about my own name. I was just saying that, yes, Jessica, way too common. It was the most popular name the year I was born. And I had to grow up my entire life not actually being called Jessica because I had another Jessica in my class and she got to be Jessica. I was Jesse. For like ever. And then I was Jess. And then finally when I was in college, I was Jessica. So mm. I feel I feel you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, even now at work, a different group, I still have two Davids working for me. Mm-hmm. And we call one Dave and one by his last name. And when I yep. play poker, uh, everyone named David, and there are several of us, has some sort of nickname or goes by their last name to the point that there has actually been confusion when someone says, hey, David, instead of, hey, Bloomberg, I have seen people go like, who, who, are, they ta- who are they talking to? <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's it's a very valid, valid issue for sure. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so, yes. So now I am wearing this 
instead of being blamed because it's not our fault. It's not our fault. I am wearing this in solidarity. You're pointing the wrong way. That's the funny part. <laughs> <laughs> I was pointing at the poster, okay? Oh, oh, okay. Mm, that's what um, And who had the poster made? Hmm. <laughs> All right. So with that settled, it's Jessica's <laughs> fault. Uh, um, 30 pages. He didn't bring the poster with him. He okay, brought 30 pages indeed. of rules with him. You, Who wrote you, that? You raise a very good point. Um, yeah. <laughs> the Davids. Um, mm -hmm. So right. with, with that, is there anything else you start. want to talk about before we get to the rules? Um, no, because we got to do this. We need to defend yes. ourselves. That's so let's right. get to it. But there's no spin here. I just want to make that clear, Mr. There's definitely No, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I already have a theory. I want to just say it, but I'll, I'll wait till the very end. Okay. But I definitely I have, have a theory. you well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've tried. Yeah, You've well, tried yeah. because I don't always listen. <laughs> but yes, no, I do think that there is a lot to discuss. It's not David Bloomberg's fault, but we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. All right. In the preseason, people were worried about Voce going out first because they thought he'd be too obnoxious or overplay or be super aggressive. He told people he could tone it down, but few believed him. Though of course, I did, and I was right about that part. Uh, as he told Rob, he proved he wasn't the arrogant a-hole so many thought he would be. This episode seemed really anticlimactic, and not yeah. just because he was my winner pick. Rob said Voce didn't seem to really do anything wrong. But this is kind of why we're here. If he didn't get voted out for the reasons people originally expected, and if many people watching thought he didn't do anything wrong, well, then the pressure is on us because mm -hmm. it's time to figure out why Voce lost. Yes. And I do need to throw in here because I'm so bad at picking a winner. I actually showed my husband the photos of each of the tribes and said, okay, just based on looking at people, who are you picking as your winner pick? He also picked David Voce. All right. Mm -hmm. So then I was reminding him when we were watching the episode, I'm like, that's your winner pick. <laughs> he For was sure. like, no. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> there's that. So we're all bad at it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So the first and still most important rule talks about the need to scheme and plot. As Voce told Rob, everyone is such a huge fan. Everyone is thinking strategy 24-7. He added, this game is about having loyalty and having trust in each other, even though you have to be skeptical of each other. Both of those are about the strategic aspect of the game, and Voce seemed to be very well situated here. Uh, he, he indicated in his interviews that he had good relationships with everyone else on his tribe once Abraham was gone. And we saw that he had a solid three within the five of himself, Evie, and Xander. The problem on Survivor is that you're not playing a game by yourself. Mm -hmm. And just because you're well situated doesn't mean you're good to go. Right. Just as you are setting yourself up to do well, others are doing the same in trying to look out for their own interests. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Evie was doing as she set herself up with multiple alliances such that she could choose which way to go. Now, the interesting thing is that I expected to be talking here about how Evie was controlling the votes on the Yase tribe, and she made a decision to go with the women instead of the men. But then we heard from Voce that the decision was basically made while Evie was out on Risk Your Vote Island, or whatever the hell name it would be called. Uh, and she barely had any time to talk to anyone when she returned. Mm -hmm. So it appears that when she came back, she basically had a choice between which allies to go with, and she went with Liana and Tiffany. Yeah. I thought it was interesting in one of his interviews as well. He described it. I, I thought this was an incredible way to describe the relationships with people. I'm close to this person, but am I strategically close to this person? And I thought that was a very interesting, mm -hmm. like, like finite kind of distinction that we don't usually hear players talk about. There is this idea of you need to have relationships but having a strategic relationship is much different than right. actually just ha forming a bond with someone. And I think that Voce was very cognizant of that, very aware of what type of relationship he had with people. And he talked a lot about how he and Tiffany were very close on a personal level, but not necessarily on a strategic level. And so I think that it's it's something to give him credit for that he was 
trying to find those differences in each person that he was playing the game with. And I don't think that's a, that type of distinction is usually something that we hear players talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, because he had those strategic relationships, he indicated in interviews that he believes if he had more time, he could have convinced Evie to vote a certain way, mm. a different way. And I, I tend to think he's right. Although of course, I mean, I, I wasn't there. I don't know for sure. Right. But it seems to me like logic was on his side. And in fact, I mean, it's obvious I would say that because it was the same logic I used when I predicted the outcome uh, last week if Yase had to go to tribal council mm -hmm. as I covered why the women would want to target Xander instead of Voce. Right. Um, in his interviews, Voce gave all the same logic that was running through his head in the game. And so from his point of view, even though he did suspect that there could be a women's alliance, he had good reason to believe they'd go after Xander. So he figured his scheming and plotting had worked and he was in a good position, but his logic didn't carry the day. Yes. Unfortunately, there were too many things working against his logic. Yeah. And so, you know, speaking of logic not holding, one thing that Voce mentioned in several of his interviews was that everyone on the tribe was talking about doing an intentional Matt Singh to lose every challenge, basically, and then go in as a tight knit duo or trio, probably duo. But uh, you know, Voce being a rational person and doing the mm -hmm. math was like, yet yeah, not everyone can idea. be the two can who survive. Right. I mean, if you know that you're guaranteed to be one of them, hey, okay, fine. But right now, I think there's only one person that can guarantee that, and that's Evie. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, the the thing is, they were. He said they were all talking to each other about it, which meant. All of them thought that they were going to be that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, again, the logic does not hold. Yeah. And I, I do think that one of the issues with this particular tribe, and I might I might have mentioned it about this group on the last podcast, there are a lot of like really big brains that are mm -hmm. on that were yeah. on this tribe. And and I and that seems to carry across most of the tribes. Where we just none of, none of whom can do puzzles. But yes. But right. I was like, well, <laughs> I was like, wait a second. These guys you're like in Harvard. You can't do a puzzle. What? Come on. But I you know, there's there's different ways of being smart. Yeah. But I will say that that a lot of the people who were coming into this game prided themselves on where they were in their with their education and the careers that they had. And it, it does really seem to be a very like intelligent heavy season and that's not something that we usually see and so doing a puzzle doesn't seem like it should be an issue people having to hide the fact that they're a doctor doesn't seem like it should be an issue because there are multiple doctors and and so you know i do think that this is this maybe is working against everyone because they are maybe overthinking everything and kind of trying to process too many things when sometimes the the simple answer is just the right answer, the one that makes the most sense, the one that is the most logical. But then you start overthinking yourself out of that logical answer and finding yourself in a spot where it's like suddenly now you're doing something that doesn't make any sense, but you're doing it because you've convinced yourself that that's what has to happen because you're overplaying your own game too soon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, talk about big brains, both uh, Xander goes to or went to University of Chicago, and that's where Voce is, too. Mm -hmm. University of Chicago is not, you know, some little backup school. You right. know, I mean, it's you know, big brains there. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, in fact, that's what ended up helping to connect Voce and Xander, because he said in his interviews that he had no intention of joining up with Xander until they did that water task together and started talking and realized they lived like two blocks away and they had run into each other at the University of Chicago gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Xander is like crazy smart. Some of the stuff he was talking about, um, what he like does. Butterflies being dead relatives. Well, that too. Oh. Which, um, okay, can we just stop there for two seconds? We have to mention the fact that one of the things Xander wanted to do was play down how smart he was because he comes across as that like surfer dude, if he mm -hmm. wants to. And what better way for people on the other <laughs> tribe to really think that this guy is that surfer dude than talking about butterflies being dead relatives. I was like, how appropriate is it that he's the right. one that has to say that line first? And everyone's like, okay, all right. That that's that guy. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by the way, uh, for anyone who was uh, playing along when we opened the podcast, you will get special Why Blank Lost bonus points if you can tell us where those lines came from. Um, we did not make them up ourselves. I believe there's approximately one listener that I know for sure will get it. But Bonus points. That's right. That's right. And uh, here's a toast to that, uh, that listener. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, you know, speaking of Xander, yeah, we, we saw how much Voce was against doing that water challenge with Xander, mm -hmm. but then find out that Xander was really gung ho to do it. Right. And so Voce didn't want to cause a big disagreement on the very first day. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I know that, uh, well, patrons by now have already heard or could have already heard that, uh, uh, Josh Wiggler was on the uh, feedback show. Um, uh, the rest of you will have to wait. Uh, but um, on that show, I, I, you know, Josh was saying, "Nah, Voce should have caused a disagreement. You know, why? Why not? Why not just take a stand and say that?" I disagree. I think on mm. the first day, you still don't want to be that guy. Yeah, especially since Voce was worried about being that guy. Mm -hmm. And and so, you've only got six people in your tribe, right? Um, but you know, the reason that of course Voce was upset was exactly what I had said, which is he wanted them all to do the triangle so they could be together, not be separated for strategy. Mm -hmm. And he told Dalton Ross, and I will stick to that and say those girls formed that all girls alliance so solidly when we were away. 100%. And that is mm -hmm. certainly possible. Well, and know? that's what happens when you, that first moment when you're out there, when you're when you hit your beach, you have to pay very close attention to where people end up mm -hmm. and who ends up with who, because that is when those relationships are formed. That's when those alliances are formed and it happens very quickly. And so those first moments, he was absolutely right to be concerned about that, that I'm going to spend four hours with this guy. They're going to spend four hours together over there. Of course, they're going to be bonding for those four hours and talking strategy even just a little bit and mm -hmm. if you have an opportunity to have a moment to have a conversation with someone and you're not talking to this person over there of course that's going to affect things moving forward and so i think he was absolutely correct in his assessment that we should all do this together that's what i was thinking too like you don't want to be separated immediately like that that's crazy and i think that this particular season we have seen what happens when people get separated. And one of the right. things he talked about was, was, e was Evie going off on that trek forever and coming back to the, the camp like five or 10 minutes before they had to go to tribal council. Like all of those things can have a negative effect on what moves forward in the game. Yeah. I mean, she was in a good enough position that she could come back and still slide into her position. Right. And, right. But if it had been someone else, the whole group could have just, worked against her or worked against whoever it was him or her if mm -hmm. it had been sent and been like, well, it's really easy to have this discussion because you know, plink, they're gone now. Right. Exactly. Yep. Um, and the same thing could have easily happened. And, you know, him having printed out the rules and been reading them knows in the first rule, it talks about how important it is to make those connections right away, set up an Alliance right away. Now you don't want to be Nasir and be like final four right here. It's like, right. Okay, let's, tone it down just a right. little bit but um you know at least make alliances you can always change your mind later well you can do you what Abby is doing right pick and choose she's yeah keeping her options open she had an opportunity to utilize that whole setup to her benefit because she knew i'm not going to be the one doing the water it's going to be these people over here because right. they're stronger. And so in her mind, of course, it makes sense because she is going to have an opportunity to separate herself and form bonds with people. But it does put those two individuals who end up doing that water challenge in a very difficult spot because right. they are two out of six. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's fine. You know, like when Abraham was like, oh, yeah, you two should do that. You know, I think mm -hmm. Rick mentioned it last time, too. Yeah. yeah, it's great if you're on the outside saying you two should do right. that. But right. But there's no way Xander should have been one of the people saying, oh, yeah, absolutely. We think right. we should do that. No, mm -hmm. Xander, shut up. <laughs> That's David's winner pick. Yeah. 
I mean, that's yeah. That's why I was yelling at Tiffany also, uh, <laughs> uh, both through the through the TV and through Twitter. Like, stop, stop going after my winner pick. So there will be no David. You're right. Not 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 today. Not today. No. 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 Um. No. You'll you'll notice I don't have that. Uh, <laughs> that I, I do have this you know the one of the times that i wore the, <gasps> see now Aww. this this could explain Look this picture can explain why we have such trouble looking ahead and seeing because if you look at our glasses in this picture there are clearly problems here <laughs> there's a lot of problems <laughs> so that was great yeah. love it so um, anyway, we can move on to the second rule, which says not to scheme and plot too much and to keep your scheming secret. Now, despite what many people thought might happen ahead of time, I, I think Voce did well here. Mm -hmm. I mentioned in the first rule that he ended up being tight with Xander, but he also said the girls actually did not think we were tight because we made sure we were not together a lot. And then in addition... We were talking about Evie making all these different plans. Well, he saw that she had final two deals with pretty much everyone. Yeah. And therefore, he did worry about his trust with her, but he told himself, do not overplay this. If Evie is double playing and is with the girls, then they will get out Xander. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to the logic we've already discussed. But the point that's appropriate here is that he knew he had to hold back rather than risking overplaying. Yeah. If you think you're safe then don't overplay it. It's right. kind of the same situation, actually, that your winner pick was in the first week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is interesting to see, honestly, how well he is utilizing the rules while he is playing the game because he's very mindful of the negative ramifications that can come from a thing. And he, and he knows, he's like, there's no reason for me to do this because if I do this, I could become a target. Mm -hmm. So why would I do that? And he is trying to take that logical perspective and hoping that everybody else will do the same. And so I do think that he was very, very great in, in how he strategized but didn't strategize too much, was very aware of the ramifications of anything that he could do that could negatively affect his game moving forward, and also very aware of how other people were strategizing. So I think all in all, he definitely did a great job kind of balancing everything out very, very nicely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can move along pretty quickly to rule number three, which tells players to be flexible. And I I think we saw that Voce did that in the few opportunities he had. Uh, first was the water challenge we already discussed, and he knew it was a terrible idea, but he also didn't want to cause himself to stand out and be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've talked about this before. It doesn't really matter if you're right, if everyone else disagrees with you. Right. Yeah. It's Survivor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, this was also something like uh, I talked about when I was on the Circle podcast in the first week of the Circle season three. Uh, there was a woman on there who had been cloned. There was someone else who had an account that was her and they were arguing like who's who. And she was trying to prove herself by telling the others, quote unquote, facts. Well, I say, quote unquote, they were facts like this is real stuff that happened to me. And she right. couldn't understand why the other players didn't believe her. Or didn't listen. She's like, but I'm telling them the truth. It doesn't matter. The truth doesn't matter. They don't know that that's the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you just have to make people agree with you. Right. Perception is reality. We've yes. talked about that a lot, yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, now, I also think his stance on this vote showed his flexibility. Uh, you know, we've already covered. He wanted Tiffany gone, but he also felt that logically... If that didn't happen, it would be Xander and eh, okay, he'd be okay for at least the moment. So yeah, I'm going to be flexible and I'm not going to push it. Yeah. And I think that that was, it was interesting too, that he kind of came to terms with everything, right? Where he, even though he knew that there was this possibility that um, Evie was working with the girls and that they were kind of forming this bond, he was also looking at kind of the the big picture, if you will, and knowing that he had a relationship with Evie as well. And that, so that's not necessarily going to harm me too much because I'm less of a threat than Xander is at this point. So it would make more sense. So he worked through all of the computations, if you will. And I love that he didn't really try to push back on why we need to vote for Tiffany as opposed to Xander, that he was okay with either decision. Obviously, that wasn't the final decision, but in his mind, he thought it was. And so there was no reason for him to fight for either one because 
either way it fell, he would have been fine with either person going home. Right, right. Now, the only other time I can specifically point to is that um, I, I kind of alluded to this earlier. I was wondering why he did the puzzle in this episode's challenge instead of having someone like Tiffany do it. And he addressed that in several interviews, noting that he was supposed to do the more physical leg, but then his tribe was like, no, you need to do the puzzle because I guess previously we'd seen that nobody else on that tribe can do a puzzle but him and Xander, uh, which is a problem when the most physical people are also the puzzle people. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, Tiffany said she could do the balance beam. And so, you know, rather than cause a problem by arguing, he went along with it. Yeah. And, you know, let's face it, normally it does come down to the puzzle. So it was another decision that seemed to make sense until it didn't. Well, but here's my my thought on that. I don't think that that's one that he should have given in on mm -hmm. just because looking at that challenge, knowing what it entails, like how physical it's going to be. I do think that it would have been a better play to at least get to the puzzle at about the same time, because you can always I know that you're not doing the puzzle, but you can oh, stand there yeah. and try to give them advice and say, no, try this, do this. Yes, it's different if you're doing it yourself, but you're not completely removed from the possibility of helping with the puzzle. And so it's not the puzzle's not going to matter if you get there five minutes after everyone else. Like uh, you're done at that point. And so I do think that that was was one of those decisions he should have said, no, you know what? No, I'm doing this part. Let Tiffany do the puzzle and then keep it the way that it was. No, that's an interesting, that's a good point, because actually in my rewatch, I noticed that Shan was doing exactly that. She was mm -hmm. in the background going, doing that. And I mean, that's something that probably comes with more experience, because I think the first puzzle they did, which he said in interviews at the end of it, they had like four pieces total. Um, I think that one, I don't know that you, that the, the people in the back could have helped as much, because it was in a line, and if you have the people standing there blocking Mm -hmm. I don't think the people in back could have helped as much. Whereas this right. one, it was kind of, it was a round puzzle. Right. So the two people doing it weren't always going to be blocking you. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so no, that's a very good point. Um, see, Thanks. one of those things that only Jessica can bring here. <laughs> There's so many other good things. There, there are, there are. Right. Um, but uh, like, you know, discussions about eye infections and 16.66667% mm -hmm. chances. But yeah, yeah. so Black you rocks. were just all over the place on this one. You were, your name was everywhere. I, it was one. everywhere. It was great. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, the fourth rule tells players not to let their emotions control them. And this was a rule that Voce specifically brought up to Rob at the end of the RHAP interview. When he blamed us. Yes. Um, he said that, you know, as he was considering voting out Tiffany, he didn't want to because of how close they were. But he remembered this rule echoing through his head. And he told himself, I can't be emotional because, you know, and I need to vote for her. And just because you poop together doesn't mean you have to vote together. That's right. That's right. Now, you know, even though it didn't work out for him, well, he was right. Yeah, you know, it's it's I'm sure that is of great comfort to him, you know, for us to say, yes, Dr. Voce, you, you were, were right. right. David, you you're right. You got voted. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Terrible. Um, Terrible. So. All right. So we can move to the fifth rule unless you have anything more on that one. No, I just I got to mention the pooping thing. That was yes. all I really. Well, I was going to mention the pooping thing in the fifth rule. So well, we again, can mention it again yeah. because who the hell shares an aqua dump with somebody? Okay. I, yeah. I, Listen. I, I don't no. know. But, no and no. Yeah. Not the, the fifth rule is about the social game, and reminds players they need to pretend to be nice. Uh, pooping together goes way beyond just being nice. And can I just throw this out here because this is immediately what I thought about when I was out on the island. One of the things that we were told was that if two of you go off anywhere together, the cameras are going to follow you. So like if you go and they specifically mentioned, if you go to the bathroom together, we will follow you because there are two of you there. If you go off by yourself, we, we'll leave you alone. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not opening myself up like that to anyone, let alone camera people to come and be like, oh, 
they're taking a dump together. Let's go in there and check this out. No, not happening. Sorry, but a lot of information there. But wow, that's a close relationship. <laughs> that's close. Yeah. That's close. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I, he, 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 <laughs> You know, he told Rob and others that, yeah, they were, you know, they were uh, aqua He told everybody together. about right. it. He was right. like, yeah, he I, loved pooped that story. With, I pooped with She Tiffany. saw my tush. She saw um, my tush. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, they slept together. They were, they called themselves the island husband and wife. Um, and he worried that people would think they're too close. And yeah, if I'm ever in a situation where I'm going to the bathroom with someone else, mm -hmm. I'm going to think I'm too close to them. Yeah. Uh, listen, I've been married for 20 years and that's never even been a shared moment in my 20 years. You don't okay? to dump together. <laughs> Go to the pool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not happening. So I, uh, yeah, that's too close. So, so it is interesting that, nobody did call them out on this. Like this didn't seem to be an issue that no one was thinking that Tiffany and Boche were too close because we do hear that a lot. Whoever right. you're sleeping next to at night, I've never heard who you're pooping with though. That's a new one. Uh, maybe you can add that to the rules. <gasps> Will you do that? Will you add Boche to your rules? <gasps> maybe. He would love that. Maybe. Hold Even on, I'm writing you, a note. I'm writing a note. It's your fault though that he lost, No, right? it's so. not. <laughs> So you should definitely add Voce to your rules yeah, gonna, because hold on. Let me let me see if I can. Do this <laughs> oh, wait, it's the facing the wrong way. Damn it. It's, you got to have the arrow the right way. Yeah, it's, it's, so uh, many things. Okay. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> anyway, but you should definitely add them to the rules. Yes. Um. Yeah. Now, of course, Tiffany wasn't the only relationship he had. And, you know, he. He talked about, just as I mentioned in the first rule, he talked about the importance of having relationships with everyone. And he said that he did. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I mean, I think it all comes back to Tiffany here. And mm -hmm. the problem seemed to occur that when Tiffany heard Voce was tossing around her name as the vote. I mean, we saw her get upset, you know, like he, yeah. he said my name. Now, Voce, again, brings logic, which is there were only five of them on the tribe. So there's only four other names to say. Mm -hmm. Apparently, no one was willing to say Evie. So that brings it down to three. Uh, if I'm talking to you, I'm not going to say your name unless I'm Brad. Uh, <laughs> right. So, you know, that only brings it down to one or two names that you can possibly say. Yeah. And, and I do so, think that that's a hard thing to deal with when you're out in Survivor and mm -hmm. having those conversations because nobody wants to be the first one to name drop. And I think he was probably very aware of that. But I do think that there is some like it's almost like I'm not dropping her name because I want her to get voted out. It's just like she did. She didn't do well in the challenge. Like that's something that we right. should talk about kind of moment as opposed to we need to vote her out. It was more just about her performance. And I think hoping that that would kind of spin into a voting conversation. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I think everybody was probably mentioning everybody's name. And he also said Liana's name was the decoy name. And I watched it twice and I still didn't get what he was talking about there. Right. But, um, you know, at, at some point, you know, Liana told Tiffany that Voce said her name and because, well, what else is Liana going to say? Well, Voce said my name. No, you know, right. and right. And that caused Tiffany to feel hurt and upset from what we saw. Um, you know, now it is kind of funny, though, not in a haha -ha funny way that Liana was the one who apparently caused Tiffany to react that way because Liana didn't appear to want Voce gone and tried to talk her out of it. Yeah, and I do think that yeah, I do think it's interesting, and I'm curious if there's any like it, the editing is trying to tell us something that's going to come later. Because one of the things that Liana said was she has to essentially babysit Tiffany because she was afraid Tiffany was going to do something stupid, and then they ended up voting out Voce. So I'm just curious if like that's kind of like we're going to look ahead a little bit that maybe this was something that mm. we shouldn't have gone along with that maybe this was, you know, cause we really did listen to Tiffany and we, we did what Tiffany wanted. And I'm just, I don't know. I, maybe I'm reading between, you know, the lines too much yeah, or looking line. at the tea leaves, but yeah, but it's just interesting that, that that was something that was referenced. And I'm, I'm just curious if maybe later 
we do see something with Xander because he does have the idol. I, you know, who knows? Who knows? I mean, we're going to see something later that I think will make more sense of this. You know, sure. I mean, I think one of the, this is one of these times, even if we go through all this, I think we'll come to a, a pretty firm understanding of what happened. But mm -hmm. I think in the following episodes or in following interviews, uh, at some point we're going to find out more about why mm -hmm. this all came about exactly. But I think- right. Much like Abraham, we didn't know the specifics, but we could figure out enough to, you know, come to a good conclusion. And I think right. we're, we'll do the same here. Um, so with that in mind, we'll move on to the sixth rule, which warns against being too much of a threat. And once again, I, I think he did a pretty good job here, making it so he didn't stand out as someone who needed to be targeted. Uh, except that, as we just discussed, it appears that Tiffany did see him as a threat. Because he was willing to target her, even though they were so close. Yes. And that's that's something that we've talked about on other seasons as well. That as soon as someone says your name, mm -hmm. that person becomes a direct threat to you. And that is a very significant issue for that person. And in a very small tribe that we've got here, obviously, if one person is mentioning your name, they only have to convince like two other people to put their mm -hmm. your name down too. So it's not like you really have to go at it and try to get a whole bunch of people together. It's literally just two other people. So I, I can see why Tiffany became so concerned because now all of a sudden Boche is saying her name. And so that yes, 100%, he's a threat to her, but I love the fact that he like totally owned his profession and was completely willing to talk about it and what he does and how it affects his every day to day life. And was talking to Jeff about it. That I think is incredible. And I think it speaks volumes as to how the game is changing mm -hmm. even more so because people are less concerned about what they're bringing to the table. It's almost that, like they. Is that so, Ms. Photographer? I know. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't want anybody to know what I did because I was so afraid it was going to affect me negatively out there. And I wasn't the only one who lied about my profession. Oh, no, everyone right? did. That was, yeah. that was one of the funniest clips on what was then CBS All Access ever, you know, was that Ponderosa where just everyone was <laughs> lying. You're like, well, I'm not actually a photographer. I'm a peace protester in China or something like that. I mean, it was, I, I only, was that it? Was It, it was something. That like was that. one of them. But the, yeah. I think the best one was the one that Chris came up with for me that I was uh, married to the lead singer of Tool, who is Maynard. And uh -huh. uh, that was to Brett. He can, he told, and Brett was dying. And cause he's a huge Tool fan as am I. And like, could not, he's like, Are you see, you're his wife. I'm like, yeah. And I told all night long, went along. It was the greatest, like, like night ever, because I got to pretend I was, Maynard's wife. <laughs> didn't someone didn't. So, I'm sorry, we're taking a big tangent here, but we are. Uh, we didn't are. someone convince someone else that Michelle, who of course was the like evangelist of the group, mm -hmm. was actually a stripper? Yes, that yeah. was the same night. Yeah. That yeah. was yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So there was so many awesome moments with every and because that particular night, I will say what we had done leading like. Before we got to Brett, it was everybody came up with their own thing. And mm -hmm. so, like, we would say, oh, this is what I was. And I I went with the, yeah, it was some, like, I don't know. I was, like, a war criminal. I, it was something crazy um, that I, like, was a prisoner in China for years or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But then that night that Brett came, we decided everyone was going to assign other people their jobs without knowing. So we had no idea like who was going to say what about who. So we were all just having dinner and everyone was like, oh yeah, well, did you know that so-and-so? And like everyone was just coming up with these crazy, it was amazing because you had to like sit there. It was the first time you're hearing this and you're like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was amazing. It was so much fun. So anyway. Now they can't do that. They'll never know that fun because he told the truth. But I do but, love that he was able to own it because I do think that there's it it can add obviously to your your worth out there, right? Mm -hmm. If people do think that you're smart and that they're like, well, can you do puzzles? Can you help us get further? And it, and I do think that perhaps maybe even on the triangle thing at the beginning, maybe he could have done that. Been like, listen, I'm a surgeon. Like, we got this. Like, we'll be fine. Like, let's try to figure it out. But I do like that he was at least owning who he was and what he did and how it affected his game. Yeah. Now the, the, uh, 
one reason he might have had to do that, you know, is because he brought along a scientific paper with the rules with 30 on, the pages of, <laughs> on the back of it. And of course, the scientific paper was probably about, you know, his his air, you know, neuro, neuroscience, neurosurgery. Point. So that's a fair point. Mm hmm. But I like uh, it. so. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I mean, the uh, the other the only other part of being a threat, I think was really had nothing to do with him which was that we saw tiffany in the midst of the swirling advantage stuff which we'll discuss in a minute here um you know it appeared to get into her head that there was this threat that if xander pulled a rabbit out of his hat she yeah. would be booted mm -hmm. and it just you know so i Anytime there's a threat to yourself, yes, you are going to take whatever actions you can to counter that threat. Yeah, and that's why I think, you know, for for Tiffany, I don't think what she was doing was all that out of out of line or too because in her mind, that is exactly what's happening. Like it's easy for Liana or Evie to be like, hey, don't worry about that. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Because those names are not the names he's saying. He's saying her name. And she knows how close they've become. They're pooping partners, for God's sakes. So it's really got to get to her that, you know, this is the guy I poop with and he's willing to vote me out. So so for her, it makes sense. It certainly makes sense to push so hard. But I do think that she lost sight of other parts of the game in doing that. You know, it's kind of you get tunnel vision because all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, somebody said my name. My name came up. What do I do? I want that person to go. And I do think that that is a knee jerk reaction that we see on Survivor constantly where, well, that person said my name. Well, now I'm targeting them. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't need to. You know, Maybe that it's too soon. Like that's instead of targeting that person, let's change the, the, the story. Let's change the narrative. Let's talk about something other than me, other than that person. And that can be something you can revisit later because I do think that this is, this is a decision that's going to come back to haunt them. I really do think that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, now we get to the seventh rule, which I know you've been dying to talk about, uh, which covers idols and advantages. There's and too many. There's too yeah. many. Well, but there aren't really. I mean, there's less than a normal survivor game. Um, but well, normally by now there'd be like five uh, idols in play. Yeah, but listen, um, there's too many go new ahead. ones. Okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll kvetch in a moment. <laughs> I've already exasperated Jessica. Uh, yes, um, I can't handle it. Now, even though Voce himself didn't have any, uh, we we have plenty to talk about. Um, as as he told Mike Bloom, there was a lot going on here. They were on they were on a five person tribe, and quote. One person doesn't have a vote. One person's at an island. And there are all these advantages that no one clearly understands. Mm -hmm. Everyone was reeling through all of these things being mm -hmm. like, wait, what's active? What's not active? Mm -hmm. And so it just became this like cluster of what in the world is going on? Yes. Um, now, we saw that, and we've already mentioned this, primarily in Tiffany's reaction. She kept asking if Xander could have the idol. And Evie just kept having to say, no, it couldn't be active. I've seen the clue. I know what they have to say. Uh, but Tiffany clearly wasn't convinced. Maybe she didn't trust Evie. Maybe she yeah. thought Evie was just saying these things to calm her down. Um, you know, but it it brings us to the next problem that Voce brought up in his interviews, that due to the game mechanics of the day, uh, and, you know, we've already discussed this, Evie was at that island trek for so long, mm -hmm. only having a few minutes when she got back. And so he couldn't really talk to her before tribal council. But more importantly, maybe it meant that she couldn't sit down with Liana and Tiffany to go through again everything she knew about Xander's situation. Right. And Voce even said that in an interview. Uh, if they were really worried about an idol or something being played, they should have split their vote. That way they could flush an idol. But there was no thinking through it. Yeah. So, and yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could have done a 2 1 1. Mm -hmm. If Tiffany had been on board with it, some people suggested that the women should have just done two one one without Tiffany being on board. That would have been a terrible idea if the whole point was to keep Tiffany, you know, the trust of Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but if you could sit down and go through it all, get some shells, you know, and and, and lay it all out, um, then you could go through and explain it if that was the sole reason you were voting it that, yeah. that way. Yeah. 
No, but I I really do feel like this episode is a perfect example of Survivor going too far with the crazy advantages and weird twists. Like, I get it that there's, oh, there's going to be so many twists. That's fine, except when those twists have a negative effect on the actual game Mm -hmm. because people can't play the game properly because they don't understand it. And they're also not given an opportunity to play the game because you've removed them from the situation. And by the time they get back, there's not enough time. Like that to me, I think is just unfair. I don't think that that the person that people should be penalized or voted out because there's a misunderstanding about what an actual advantage is. It's one thing to be like, I know that person has an idol. And I know how idols work and I don't want to be idled out because that person's going to play an idol. It's another thing to have players just be confused about what this person's advantage actually is and what it means. And to be kind of like making assumptions based on something that's completely false because they don't understand it. And that, and I know that it's a new thing. And so of course now people, if they do this next season, people will know they've seen it, whatever. Well, not the but next season, the next not the next season. Filmed, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So season 43, but I do think that that is not fair to the players because they can't actually play the game because they're trying to figure out what production is doing. And then to have someone have to be gone for so long right before a tribal council also is problematic. And I know that they've done things similar to that before. You go on reward challenges with certain people and you come back or you're brought back right before tribal council. So I I have less of an issue with that part, but I have more of an issue with this kind of this whirlwind of activity that's happening. Yeah, I think it's the stacking. Yes, that's the the problem. Like we talked about earlier, the daisy chain of... yeah. In order to use the extra vote, you have to have a vote, but you don't have a vote because you found this, but you also can't mm-hmm. use your shot in the dark because you don't have a vote because right. you found this. There's too and, much. Yeah. Like, let, um, let the game happen organically. Let people try to form bonds and relationships. Let people strategize without having to think about all of this extra crap that you've now thrown in there that people don't understand. And I, I listen, I love survivor. I love CBS. They've done great things with the show, but sometimes less is more because I do think that we could then just appreciate the gameplay. And you have people on this tribe that are all playing very, very well. Mm -hmm. They're all strategizing. They're thinking things through. They're trying to make the right decision but they can't make the right decision if they don't even understand the boundaries in which they're playing the game. And that to me is definitely a fail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one less thing could have changed everything. 100%. Yeah. Now I will say this has driven some people that I've been talking to, to say luck has overtaken the strategic game. That I will fair. not go that far. Um, it's a valid point though it's a valid point that there's more luck but i will not say it has overtaken the strategic game Mm -hmm. Uh, i was in a friendly debate with scott long who is one of the publishers of anti-up poker magazine and also a host of anti-up poker podcast uh, who is also a longtime survivor fan and i think on his next podcast he's going to bring this up he was talking Mm -hmm. about it okay um now he contends that with this season's changes luck now plays a bigger role than strategy but I've told him he's wrong. Uh, I would agree that Voce got the short end of the stick in part because of people being overwhelmed by new twists. Mm -hmm. But it was still people who made those decisions. And as we've already discussed, those weren't the only reasons that the decisions were made. There were other things going on. Oh, for sure. But I do think this exacerbated things. Right. No, absolutely. But like the prisoner's dilemma, that is strategy. That is not Mm -hmm. luck. It is a new thing. It messes yes. with the game, but it is strategy. The shot in the dark. Well, the outcome of it is a last chance luck, but it's still strategic because you have to give up your vote and, you know, other people can use strategy to guide you away from it, which is what we saw last week. Yeah. Shan talked Sarah out of using it. And then we heard from Voce that the reason he and Xander were talking to Abraham so much and making him feel good What is to keep him from using the shot in the dark? Well, right. But if you, but here's the thing about all of that. Like, okay, the shot in the dark, I will say is less of an issue because it is something that was explained to 
the entire cast. Like Jeff explained, well, he did say, you know, he, the shot in the dark is a thing mm-hmm. and like talked about what it was and you're all going to have this die. And, and I think that there's time for everybody to kind of process that right. where they're like, okay, so what is the shot in the dark? Let's talk about it. Let's see how it works. Let's figure it out before we go to tribal council. Cause we do have three days. They did wait at least three days before they had that first tribal council. But then when you have advantages, now this is where I don't like the level at which things have, have turned into an idol is always a question. When you go to tribal council, there is one certainty with tribal council and that is everybody gets to vote, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone gets to put a name down. Now they have changed that because there's this idea of the shot in the dark. So you're like, okay, so that's new because now this person doesn't get to vote and they could potentially have immunity. So it's like a double whammy, but it might work. It might not work. So that's a level, but now you have things happening within the game where people are losing their votes and but then but it's 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 very strange that like like Xander is a perfect example he has an extra vote but he also lost his vote so it's like so okay so now he's got no vote until this weird thing happens that involves other people in the tribe but at some point like there's too many things that are right. kind of like negative, you know, like it, it's, it's it's what, but here's my thing. We've seen this before for people who are saying like Scott, my friend, Scott, um, for people who are saying like luck has now overtaken the game. We saw Suri. Yes. Advantage was, out yeah. of the game. Right. And, and this that is happened how many more seasons, how many seasons ago? That's all I'm saying. This is not new. It is well, not new. It's not new, but this idea of of taking away people's votes in this way. But that's not I, even new. I mean, there were idle there were they were vote steals. There are vote steals. And but I but it's it's just kind of like I this idea that if somebody uses a shot in the dark, they lose their vote. Mm-hmm. Uh Xander doesn't have a vote. Now you've got two people that can't vote. Like you end up negatively affecting the ability of other people to play the game because of by chance who they've now aligned themselves with and who ends up with this like well Xander like I don't have a vote anymore sorry that you're hanging out with me and you decided to be in my group I don't have a vote because that's you know because I found this thing on on the you know on the trail and opened it but even that to uh, to my mind isn't luck it's a decision that Xander made he saw the beware Mm-hmm. He still decided to open it. Now, many people have said anybody on Survivor is still going to open it. Yeah. Okay. But we already talked about it. He could have gone to his allies and said, What should I do? Should I open this? It says there could be consequences. Or right. should we put it back and leave it alone because we've got this game going fine. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in a way, it's similar to the risk of vote. No, I don't want to risk my vote because the game's going fine. Yeah. And, you know, he made that decision. He also made a decision to sit there and read the parchment out in the open such that Evie and Voce could come upon him. Because Voce said it wasn't like he made the choice to share it with them. They Mm -hmm. walked up on him while he was sitting there reading it. About butterflies. Yes. Um, Whereas if he had you know, done what most people do when they find something and skitter off into the forest. Um, He could have read that in private and then gone to Voce and been like, hey, what do we do here? And then maybe Evie doesn't know about it. No, and that is fair too. And and I do, but I do think that this is one of those situations where when you are playing this game and you don't know what to expect, obviously Mm -hmm. things that surprise you are things that you have to process to try to understand and how right. is this going to negatively affect my game? You saw Xander reading that and then it was like, oh, this is great. You know, it was like this whole thing and then got to the end and was like, oh, this is not second. an advantage. This is um, not okay. Right. This is yeah. a disadvantage. This is not okay. Yeah. And and so I I just don't like things that that end up taking away people's ability to play this game very well. Voce was playing this game very well, right? Suri, always playing this game very well. And then you have advantages that get in the way of that gameplay. And it's to no fault of the people who have been negatively affected by those advantages when there's too many of them. And I think right now it's like overwhelming because we can't keep track. It's too much. 
It's yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not in favor of advantage getting. Don't anybody misunderstand yeah. that. All I'm saying is this is not new. I mean, for years, people have been saying finding an idol is luck. You know, so if anything, I think the luck factor has been somewhat reduced this season because there have been choices made. Mm, rather mm -hmm. than just right. the luck of, for example, that we saw when we watched Heroes versus Villains, and oh, there's Parvati sitting down to eat oh, at her sure. at, mm -hmm. at her reward, and poof, there's an idle clue that falls out of her napkin into her lap. Right, pure, unadulterated luck. For sure, yes. You know, and with idols, of course, you could be strategically running a large majority and find yourself voted out with only one or two votes. Mm -hmm. That may have happened when someone saved you as a matter of fact mm -hmm. um so you know people have often complained about the luck factor in that so i think the change to fewer idols right now there are none essentially right um enhances strategy and it's less luck based i'm not saying you know if if jeff had come to me had called me instead of mike white and said david um what do you think we should do here? I'd be like, slow down there, Jeff. Right. Let, let's think this let's through. Let's take a breather here. Yeah. And not do it all at once, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but do I mind the beware disadvantage compared to idols? No, because there's more strategy involved. There is more luck in terms of, well, he can't use it until the people on the other two tribes, you know, find something. Mm -hmm. But he was also warned, you know, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like Jamal where he just goes and pulls something and all of a sudden he's, you know, got something negative happening to him. There was yeah. a warning attached to it. No, and I, I don't disagree with that, but I, that doesn't mean I have to like it all. Right. No, no, we don't have to like it. Right. So um, now what it comes down to is, do I think Voce suffered from some bad luck in getting booted? Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that overall luck plays a bigger role in the game com compared to strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, press your luck. I know which has the word <gasps> luck in it. Oh my gosh, I um, love that game. Yeah, it's not no that whammies. game. Right. Yeah, I mean, there, there were some whammies. But, uh, you know, Abraham, even, you know, even, even if we were to say Voce was totally luck, which we're not saying. Abraham was voted out for good reason. Sarah was voted out for good reason. It could have been either Xander or Voce this time. And some things made it go to Voce. But again, that goes to a point in the rule, which is knowing how to deal with idols, advantages, and game mechanics. Sure. But if they don't even understand the mechanics right. of the advantage, that's where I have a really big problem with it because they yes. don't even understand it, which is right. then negatively affecting their ability to appropriately strategize around that advantage or well, disadvantage. I, mean, I think Voce understood it, but maybe it should have had a warning of you got to be a brain surgeon to understand this, you know. <laughs> I thought it was a rocket scientist or something. Well, you could be either. Or right. you could be a rocket surgeon or a brain scientist, you know. Nice. I like that. Yeah. It's good. So, all right. With all of that, we can move on to Appendix A, which is about the tribe keeping its end goals in mind when voting. And, of course, uh, talks about the players voting out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, <gasps> then the strong. Somebody might have mentioned that. Yes. Uh, now, usually, we focus on the rest of the tribe and analyze whether they made the right decision. But in this case... Voce told Rob he was thinking about this very appendix when he was considering the vote and knew they should be voting out the week. Mm -hmm. And he was right. If, if, and this is a very big if that we often bring up, if people cared about trying to stay, stay strong as a tribe. Yeah, and if they're willing to do that crazy, whatever it's called, where they lose on Intentional purpose. Intentional matching. Yeah, then yeah. they really don't care about the strength of the tribe. No. Right. And actually, we were talking about Eric Reichenbach and his ongoing uh, uh, comics. He did one for this episode mm -hmm. where Voce is sitting there uh, saying, we've got to stop the bleeding in this tribe. And the women are like, do we really or are things going OK? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we're fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's yeah, that's the thing. They clearly didn't care. And, of course, he wanted to do it because he knew he could be at risk otherwise, even if mm -hmm. it was 
Xander voted out instead of him. Right. It's only a delay. But, you know, even though we often summarize it as vote out the weak than the strong, et cetera, there's a reason that I changed the name of this appendix. It used to, well, one, it used to be a rule. And two, it used to just say vote out the weak than the strong, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's keep your end goals in mind. And, you know, we, we take great pains to note that. I said last week, loyalty should be more important than challenge strength. And as Evie said to Liana and Xander, Tiffany will be really loyal in the game and viewed them as her babies. Right. So that's what I said last week. Evie said something similar this week at Tribal Council, noting that they could be swapped and then bonds are more important than challenge strength. 100%. And, yeah. And this is in the appendix. Mm -hmm. It says there is something to be said for not worrying about voting off the week early on if you know that tribe swapping will occur at some point. Instead, keep an alliance partner, which should almost be almost always be your top concern. And that is the part that seems to be what Evie and Liana were thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say the next sentence says this is not something you should gener you generally want to do at the first or second vote because odds are against the swap happening so quickly. But. Evie and Liana may have been infected by Jeff repeating, you know, much the same way Abraham was uh, that we saw last week. This is a quicker game. You got to move fast. You got to yeah. move fast. And so they may be thinking about that as well. And For sure. so. So, you know, we could speculate all we want right now. We really can't say for sure whether it was a good move until we look back at it in retrospect. Yeah. Um, and that's what we usually do in this appendix. So, like, if. Ever, uh, you know, I mean, one of them is going to lose, obviously, you know, only one person can win. So whoever right. loses at the time, whoever loses first, whether it's Evie or Liana, we will probably mention this appendix and say, hmm. maybe they should have done this, depending right. on how it happens. I mean, right. if they lose in <clears throat> final six, then we're going to be like, yeah, who cares? Right. Um, but, um, you know, if they lose, say, in a couple weeks, mm, this might come up. And this is what I'm saying. There's that foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Liana's comment. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So with that, it's about time to wrap things up for Dr. Voce. Uh, Dr. Jessica, Voce. what are your final thoughts? So my thoughts on Dr. Voce. First, I am so sorry, Dr. Voce. That <laughs> Don't be sorry. It wasn't our fault. <laughs> That you took all of that time to copy 30 pages of the rules and you studied them because this is what I think. No, no, no. Listen, this is what I believe. I believe that Voce played this game to a T, following the rules just the way that David Bloomberg tells everyone they need to follow the rules. This is how you need to play Survivor. He played Survivor exactly the way that the rules say that you should play survivor his biggest problem was that the rest of his tribe was not playing the way that david bloomberg says to play this game and so that is why dr voce lost he lost because the other people were not as well studied as voce was studied so i do think that there is a lot to be said about his approach to the game, because he really did. I mean, he truly did try to follow these rules. I mean, when David Bloomberg is in your own head, when you're coming back from a challenge and you're thinking weak and the strong, weak and the strong, <laughs> you know that you have read these rules a lot. He's probably read them more than I have, um, which is interesting <laughs> considering what I do. But so I will say that I do think that he suffered from probably being almost too well studied, right? Where he was so prepared to play this game by the rules and the way that he should. And he was doing that. But what he didn't take into account is that other people aren't going to. And that, that I think is where he ended up faltering because you have somebody like Tiffany who is reacting to the game that Voce is playing. And she's reacting because her name is being said. And that reaction is causing an effect. And because there's all of these other things happening within the game, you can only prepare yourself for so much when you play Survivor. There's only so many things that you can do. And Voce clearly did that. He did everything he needed to do to understand the mechanics of Survivor as he knew them to be. Now, there's new stuff. There's new things being thrust upon all of these players. There's new things they have to figure out. 
and that have not yet been worked into the rules, right, David? That's going to have to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, Boche found himself in a situation where you have a very small tribe, so that's something that's working against him. You have a very strong individual who is playing the game exceptionally well by having multiple options, right? Evie has this group over here and she has this group over here. She's doing very well at juggling those two things. And juggling so chainsaws? Juggling chainsaws, right. So she's very aware of what's happening and in a great place. And then you've got Xander who is then negatively affecting people's ability to play this game the way that they want because he's got a vote, doesn't have a vote, might have an idol, might not have an idol. And then, you know, so there's all of these extra things. And so I guess for Dr. Voce, even though he came in as studied as he, as well studied as he was, there were so many other things that he could not prepare himself for. And he tried. He certainly tried to prepare himself for all of them. And I do think that he did a great job playing the game. Unfortunately, there are certain parts of this game that you cannot predict and you cannot control. And that is how other people are going to play the game. And so I'm sorry, Dr. Voce, that the rules did not work in your favor. But I'm happy that you were such a great big fan of, you know, this guy over here, here, yep, yep. there, <laughs> because I am too. And, you know, so it was, it's nice to hear that there's someone else out there that was like, yeah, he knows what he's talking about, but sorry, if you want to think it's his fault. I mean, <laughs> I, I think that was Rob trying too. to put, I think, I think that was Rob putting words in his Every mouth. Every once in a while, yeah. you know, yeah, it can happen. Yeah. He's but, not always uh, right. <laughs> That's all I'll say. There you go. Um, so, um, yeah, I will say that there were a couple things that I'd forgotten to say earlier that your your wrap up reminded me of. One is that we've seen before that the actions of an ally can cause someone to get voted out. Mm -hmm. Like someone can be merrily going along and doing just fine, but their ally over there pisses someone off or does something else wrong. And they're like, oh, we need to weaken that person. Let's get rid of this guy. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, what did I do? Well, you were aligned with the wrong person. In mm -hmm. this case, there was some of that here. He was aligned with Xander, who was, right. you know, all over the place. Um, the other thing is, this goes back to take it back to something poker related again. I have had people who I know, professional poker players, tell me it is easier to play against studied professionals than it is against amateurs. Mm. Now, I'm not saying any of the other people on this tribe are amateurs. We've talked about they're all big brain people. They're all fans. But if they were not as studied in the specific way to play, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know necessarily how they're going to react. Right. And so if you expect someone to react a certain way and they do not, much like he expected logic to take hold and Xander to be voted out, it doesn't always work that way. Right. So, um, but now on to my own uh, final thoughts. I And there's going to be more poker here too. But um, I, I almost always say people don't lose just because of bad luck. And that's true here as well. We discussed a lot of the luck component. And while some of that worked against Voce, they weren't the reason his torch was stuffed. That said, you can do almost everything right and still get screwed. Voce thought he had a super solid alliance. He knew Evie was playing hard. He just didn't realize Evie was outplaying him in terms of having more options. Each player should be doing their best to get set up to do well. But others are doing the same and trying to look out for their own interests. It's similar to a poker game. You are playing your game to the best of your ability. Your opponent is presumably doing the same thing. But sometimes you're going to run quads into a straight flush and there's just nothing you can do about it. In a zero-sum game, someone comes out ahead, someone else has to come out behind. Doesn't mean they were bad. It just means they weren't as good at that particular moment to overcome whatever happened. It's extremely difficult to fold quads in a poker game. It was also difficult for Voce to see exactly what position he was in. As I mentioned earlier, last week, I gave a prediction for what would happen if the Yase tribe lost, giving all the logic of why the women would want Xander targeted instead of Voce. 
Then there were even more reasons piled on this week. In his interviews, Voce gave all the same logic that was running through his head in the game, and he thought the others would see that. But sometimes logic doesn't win, or should I say, a particular person's logic doesn't win. Liana and Evie had their own reasons and logic for why they made this decision. Maybe they were just willing to cater to Tiffany because that's what allies do, and they felt that having Tiffany as a super solid ally was more important than anything else. Maybe it was because it didn't really matter which guy went first. We won't know till next week, or maybe the week after, I suppose, but Voce and Xander may have been essentially interchangeable. Do I think it made more sense to get Xander out at this time? Yes. So did Voce. I think so did you. But it might have only given him a one tribal council reprieve anyway. Voce had good relationships and good allies. But one of those allies he thought was tight was actually more solid with a different group. And when one of his tightest relationships found out he was gunning for her, she wanted him gone immediately, no matter what the logic of Xander's situation might have been. In a different situation with more people on the tribe or more time to discuss it after Evie got back, maybe there would have been a different outcome. But we can't deal with hypotheticals, only what actually occurred. Time will tell whether it was the right decision or not for those who made it. But Voce was outmaneuvered and outgunned. And that is why Voce lost. And it's not my fault. <laughs> David, you're right. All right. Yay. I'll hand this to you. Here you go. It's not David's fault. <laughs> I don't know why I'm handing this to you. It's from your sweatshirt, but I got it. So. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a great shirt. Yes. Yes, it is. Um now, before we uh, get to our predictions, uh, I'm not doing them. Yes, you are. Uh, let me remind everyone Shit. that the <laughs> rules that Better we just discussed are available in both poster and t shirt and mug and sweatshirt form. And everything. Uh, yeah. So for the shirt or the mug, uh, go to robhasawebsite.com or robhasapodcast.com and click on the merch link for the poster. Go to tinyurl.com slash David Rules Poster 2. Yep. And you should definitely get out there and order. And if you cannot order on eBay, you can certainly contact me through Twitter. You can DM me. I am at Jessica Lewis 89 which is on my screen here. He's at David Bloomberg. You can also, you know, follow him on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. But yes, yeah, so let me know if you're interested if you can't order on eBay. Okay. So, uh, or you can go on the game and talk about how great we are, and then we'll send you a free poster. That is absolutely 100% true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now so, David Voce has a constant reminder that he can hang on his wall as to why he didn't win Survivor. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He was too well studied. That's right. <sighs> All right. Predictions. I know you're trying to distract me. I, yeah, I'm not going to give you one. Yeah. I have no idea. Well, None. I mean, there's one easy prediction, but let's hold off on that. So, Xander? Um, yeah. Um, but Done. Let's, let's start with the, the Love You tribe. Um, love now, you. Yes. Things have changed mm. since my last prediction because I thought Nasir would be a likely boot at this tribe. Um, but we started the second episode by hearing how the tribe needs him to stick around. Yeah. So now we have absolutely no idea um, because we've seen so little of them. We did get a secret scene from Entertainment Weekly mm -hmm. showing Heather wanting Sydney to go and even making up a dream about Sydney coming after her. Which is so weird. It is extremely weird. Because all you're doing is causing everybody else to talk about you. Yes. Like they're all now talking about Heather. Yes. And like, what is that? What is that all about? And that is why I'm going to predict Heather if the Love You Tribe should lose. I think but that's a great prediction. Yeah, let's face it, they're not going to. No, um, they won't. They won't. At Ua, I had said Brad would probably be in trouble. And nothing happened in this episode that changed my mind. In fact, it only made it clearer that Brad is making himself stand out in a negative way. Yeah, but did you see uh, what's, you know, anticipated to happen next week? Which part? Uh, well, it was like, you know, the preview at the end. He and Shan clearly are very excited about something that Brad seems to have found. 
Yeah, but if he tells Shan, then Shan can use it against him. I mean, Shan is puppeteering him. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But oh. she might also want to be able to use him long term because, I mean, he's – I think it's interesting how he drops certain, like, terminology or, like, phrases, like, when he's doing his confessionals that makes it sound like he's very well studied on the game. <laughs> I don't think that he necessarily is. I think he's one of those people who has watched it a lot and may, and he, I mean, we know he's listened to podcasts because in his responses to the RHAP podcast, he said, coming to you live from Fiji. Oh, here no, I am. he did, but he, he started very late and then he just went right. back and watched some seasons. Right. Yes. So yeah. he is studied in certain things. The question is how well it stuck. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, all right. So then, yes, we get to Xander because I think it's clear if Yase goes back to tribal council, Xander will be gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then I, we'll I, find I, out what happens with this whole butterflies and yes, astroturf and maybe, maybe. Um, so that means the only question is which tribe will lose, in my opinion. I suppose it's possible Yase could find a way to win the next challenge, but it sure doesn't seem likely. Yeah. Um, so I, bye bye Xander, I think. Yeah. That's going to be sad. That poor tribe. I agree. I agree with everything you said. Okay. Well, that's one way to get out of making predictions. Is just no, because listen, it. It next really, time you're going first. No, it, it does really, because here's what I find very fascinating. <laughs> like about the Ua tribe Ua. is that I'm still like somewhat confused as to who is like actually like really close to who because they all seem to be like she's my number one he's my number one you know like but they but it seems to be so but are like, any of them going number two together <laughs> right this is a good question are they doing the aqua dump together so i do find it fascinating that ua is so good at kind of maneuvering themselves in the way that they are that you really don't even know like who is absolutely their ride or die because they all kind of seem to have their own opinion and it's not necessarily clear with the way that it's being edited as to who is actually that close. So Ua fascinates me in that regard because I, I thought Ricard was going to be in a bad place, but then like he says, Shan is like my number one. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, what, what just happened? Well, see, I said that last week, I started off by saying it looks like Ricard's in a bad position, but then I, I backed off on that because mm -hmm. I think that you have Shan and then you have a Ricard offshoot and then you have a Brad offshoot. Right. And then JD is in there somewhere. And, yeah. you know, so you've got, but, all roads lead back to Shan. Right. Which is and, similar to what we see on Yase. Yes. You know, where we've Yase, got yeah. Evie, who is kind of like that center hub. Mm -hmm. So I do think that it's very interesting. We just really haven't gotten to see who from the Love You tribe is that center hub. If there is one. I mean, they right. haven't voted yet. Right. So they don't need to worry about it. Right. They can just be the Love You tribe. That's right. It was but I do think tribe. that. I do think that um, that whole and it was interesting watching Heather explain why she's like, I just made the whole thing up. Yeah, I didn't have that dream. I just, and I'm just like, what? Why would you even do that? Why would here's you even the thing. Bother? Let's read the edit a little bit here. If that was going to come up. It would have been in the show instead of being an extra clip. If that was going to come up anytime soon. Yeah. That's you know, true. that Heather and Sydney were going at each other. Yeah, it would have been on the show because mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. People who are only watching the show, which is the vast majority of people. Right. Sorry, Dalton Ross, but they it is no the idea. vast majority. So I, that's another reason I don't think Love You is going to tribal council anytime yeah. soon. And I don't think they're going because they've got the strongest people. Well, like yes. Physically strongest people. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. So there so, we are. Good. Okay. So then, yeah, as we wrap up, I want to encourage people to check out the RHAP patron program at robhaswebsite.com slash patron. Um, this is the beginning of a month. And the beginning of a survivor season. There is mm -hmm. no better time to become a patron. And Rob is doing stuff even more than before. I talked earlier about how patrons will already have had the opportunity to listen to the Josh Wiggler feedback show. Mm -hmm. Non patrons got to wait till Sunday. Um, there's also on, I think, Monday, 
every week there'll be a patron only call in Q&A show. Uh, similar to the one that was done for Big Brother. Of course, if you're listening to this and you weren't a patron during Big Brother, you don't know what it means when I say similar. So I don't mm. even know why I'm saying it. But <laughs> there you go. It's a call-in show. Um, there's a lot of other different ways to have fun. I think I heard a rumor that the patron mafia may be coming back. Um, there's the monthly patron call-in shows, a weekly Q&A show with his wife, Nicole. He did a podcast with his son, his eight-year-old son, Dominic, on big this Big Brother season, which was amazing and adorable. Mm -hmm. And you can only so get that cute. if you're a patron. So cute. Um, so, uh, yeah. Just, plus, on top of that, there's a whole Facebook community group um, where you can talk about Survivor, Big Brother, life in general. We're both there. Um, so, yeah, again, just go to robhaswebsite.com slash patron. And once you get to the Facebook groups, make sure to say hello. Yes. And again, you can say hello to us on Twitter. I'm at Jessica Lewis 89. He is at David Bloomberg. And you should definitely follow us both because we do love to live tweet during the Survivor episodes. David likes to try to take credit for things and act like he's faster at tweeting than I am. So you it is a demonstrated fact. Definitely. Yeah, but my tweets are better. They're just better. <laughs> that is a falsehood. That is not false. I am absolutely right about that. So you should definitely follow us both. Yes, at Jessica Lewis 89, and he is at David Bloomberg. Yes. And uh, when you're there, you can uh, feel free to tag the, ha the use the hashtag YXLost. Yes, 100%. Um, also, make sure that you're subscribed to all of the RHAP Survivor podcasts at robhasapodcast.com slash subscribe or on your favorite podcatcher. Now, note that I said something different. I For years, I've been saying robhasapodcast.com slash survivor. Well, now there's a new page slash subscribe, and it gives you all these different options as to what you can do. You can subscribe to just the survivor. You can subscribe to just the wrap ups, which we're also on. You can do just the main feed, or you can do what I do, which is every damn thing. Um, and so, you know, by doing that, you get this podcast, you get the know-it-alls, you get the B&B, &B, you get Taryn and Shannon's new shows. It's all out there. There is so much content. When you're done listening to this podcast, you can go listen to all the other ones. Yes, you should. You should listen to all of it. It's yes. all great. And I would love to say thank you at this point in time for everyone who does so much work. Thank you, Scott St. Pierre, for all of the editing that you do for Why Blank Lost and also all of the RHAP content. And also thank you to Will from America for the incredible theme song that you've created for David and I. We really, truly appreciate it and enjoy it. So thank you both for the incredible work that you do. And thanks, David, for another fun opportunity for me to get to say you are not right because oh, and your winner pick <sighs> did not win. Unfortunately for you. Good for me because now we're both out of the running and uh, you can't rub it in my face every week and be like, ha ha, you suck. I'm That's great. True. Look at I me. can't rub it in your face every week, just right. this week because now. I lasted one more week. Than right. You. So it's done. It's over. We're moving on. Mm -hmm. And now we just you, get you to... just keep thinking that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just see who ends up actually winning the season because clearly right. we cannot choose correctly. Right. Right. But, and thank you, yeah. Jessica, for not rubbing that in my face too much. That, uh, <laughs> you know, not being like Rob and claiming that, uh, you know, this you're was, to blame, you know, that I was I was the one to blame. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah. But we will be back here next week. And, um, you know, hopefully nobody will be blaming us for their loss. Uh, and. Uh, on top of that, we won't have to worry about either of our winner picks being voted out. No, because they're already out. That's right. We're good. Enjoy that trip, that pre-jury or trip, you know, whatever if they call it. If there was that. one, yeah. Yeah, if there, that's true, if there was one. All right. So. Well, whatever you got to do, I hope Survivor and CBS fed you very well and you got yes. to do at least some fun yes. things. All right. Well, with that, again, we will see you back here in one week. Bye.